Hello, hello to football fans all around the world. Hope you guys are doing safe. I'm Harry Sugiyama with... This is Sean Carroll. Uh, Harry, very good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you too, sir. Now the J-League season has finally ended. The MVP was this man over here, the one and only Michael Alunga. Um, age 26 with his 28 goals. Uh, he's the top scorer too. So with the MVP, double crown for him then. What do you make of it? Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a surprise. Not because he's not a fantastic player, but obviously Kawasaki Frontale won the league by, by such a long distance. And they had nine of the players in this year's best 11. So it looked as though it would be one of them. But um, yeah, what a phenomenal player. He's, he scores obviously a lot of goals, but he's got so much more than that to his game. Um, so I think overall it's called the best player of the year. And I think he was the best player of the year. So yeah, very deserved. Right then, let's do this. This is J League Monthly kicking off. So, hello again. Welcome to J League Monthly. I'm accompanied by yours ever, Mr. Sean Carroll. How are you, Sean? I'm doing very well, thank you. I look forward every month to seeing how you're going to introduce me each time. So, uh, <laughs> you don't let me down any time. They're always magnificent introductions. How are you doing? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Hanging in there. What a great <laughs> year. Um, hanging in there, but you know, always good to see such quality um, of footy out there or over here in Japan, mate. Um, MVP, we talked about it a bit, um, like a minute beforehand, but it's, it was Michael, Michael Ilunga. 32 games, 28 goals, and he could have had more. Yeah, he could have done. Uh, we touched upon him obviously in, in a previous episode, and we knew about the form he showed last year in J2. He came up and did exactly the same thing in J1. Just nobody could stop him. Uh, as you said, 28 goals is a phenomenal return for, for 32 appearances. Um, and there was only two teams he didn't score against this season in the league. Um, one of them was Oita Trinita. Right. And one game against him, he only played, I think, five minutes. I think he must have come off the bench at the end. And the other one will come to a little bit later on. But yeah, there were only two teams that, that managed to stop him scoring this season. But just uh, catching up with how incredible his, you know, his turn of form. He came here uh, when in the year that Kashiwa Racer were actually relegated. Um, but from there, he's bounced back, earned his place, and then he's just showed us what he's really all about, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think he's, he's shown a great attitude too. He really seems to be happy at the club. There have been a lot of rumours about maybe he'd go back to Europe, maybe he'd go abroad somewhere else. But he stuck it out there. He genuinely seems to really enjoy playing there. His, uh, when he received the award in his speech, he was very like, keen to thank everybody at the club and the fans mm -hmm. and everyone he played alongside. And fingers crossed he's he's still there for a while longer yet. Um, I'm sure opposition defenders probably hope hope he's off somewhere else soon. But yeah. race or fans and neutrals definitely want to see more of him in the J-League, I think. Excellent. So we had some words from Michael um, and we asked him um, the question, which was his favourite goal? Uh, let's have a look then, here we go. Uh, I think um, I have two goals which are um, a little bit undecided because uh, the first goal was uh, my third goal when I scored uh, my first hat-trick in uh, J-League, you know, because um, this goal, it was uh, a matter of uh, a quick decision making because when I received the pass, you know, the keeper was coming and um, it was a tight space and I had to take um, the shot in less than one or two seconds, you know, and then it, it's really fantastic. It looked like an easy goal, but uh, it required a lot of intelligence. And um, my other good goal was uh, the second goal against Yokohama FC. You know, from uh, the trapping of the ball, you know, it really gave the ball a good uh, projection to my left foot, which is my favorite side. And um, the finish was also really quite, quite amazing. So these two goals, you know, they were really fantastic. And uh, I'll pick them as my two best goals in the season. Oh, Sean, let's have it then. What's your verdict? Oh, I don't know. Like, it's hard. That... The first one, I think, against your Karma FC yep. is more impactful, right? But right. as he said with the explanation, I think the, the difficulty of the second one, there was a defender right with, with it goalkeeper wasn't expecting the shot yet to so get those two touches in um, but 
I'm inclined to go with Yokohama FC. I think maybe he's got a little bit of fondness for the other one because it was the the third goal of his, his first hat trick. I'm going to go with Yokohama FC, I think. How about you? Yeah, I'm going to go along with how you're thinking too. Um, when we think about the best goal, you know, it's got to be the impact. Um, you know, the, 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 the touch, um, the silky touch and the pass too for the other goal is pretty amazing. But if, for example, this was back in the UK, we we're watching Match of the Day, the best goal of the season or something, it's, it's going to be that um, one against Yokohama FC. It's almost got like a Burkamp-esque um, touch to it. You know that goal that Burkamp yeah. scored against Argentina? Um, yeah. you know, there's, there's something ridiculous going on there. I think I actually saw this live um, and I just thought to myself, this is just outrageous. Like Olunga, he's a big guy, but yeah. the, the skills that he has with control, it is so nifty and clever. There's intelligence there. So yeah, yeah. I think we've got the verdict, right? I agree. Yeah, it's not it's not just that you said there's that touch, that delicacy to his play, but also the awareness of the space around him. He knew straight away where the space was going to be, where the defender was heading and to be able to take that touch to make the space and then to convert it as well. You know, a lot of times in the J League, you see someone get in the position and then they have the time to think and they they right. come a bit confused, a bit uncertain what to do and then they don't they don't finish it. But with him, you know, pretty much as soon as he's in and there's a shot on goal, it's probably going to end up in the back of the net. Definitely. He's definitely got that killer's instinct, hasn't mm. he? Now, um, Sean, we've got to speak about a game, a match that Olunga is going to feature then. Uh, yes. 2021, uh, going into the new year. A massive a title, one of the three. Um, it's a Levan Cup final, and it's going to be Kashua Racehall um, versus FC Tokyo. What do you mm -hmm. make of this game then? I'm getting deja vu. I'm sure we've discussed this before on here, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> We did. We were both meant to be going to the game, but because we were. Of, because of um, you know not complications, because of um, the C word, COVID. Yeah. Right. It had to be. Yeah. yeah. It was. Yeah. It was a shame that it was a shame that it got cancelled. But again, it's fantastic the J League have been able to rearrange it. And right. I think you know, in a way, it's going to be nice. Normally, this game is the is the first cup final of the season. It comes relatively early, end of October, start of November. Still away before the end of the season, but it's going to be quite nice to have a, a cup final. The, yeah. the Levan Cup final to kind of bring the bring the curtain down, and the fact that yeah, it's going to have the the player of the year, the top scorer, and as I hinted at slightly before, the team they're playing against, FC Tokyo, he hasn't scored against in it this year. They're yeah. one of the other teams that have stopped him scoring. So can they do it again? Three games? Can he can he finally break down the defense? So there's that added little bit of intrigue as well. So yeah, it's certainly something else to to look forward to. And, and the eyes of the world will be on this game too. Uh, it's going to be um, held on the 4th of January, uh, the cup final. And um, it's available on YouTube all around the world, except in Japan and in Thailand. So wherever you are, just, you know, smack on your YouTube and you'll be able to see this game. It's excellent. And if you are in Japan, you can check it out um, on Fuji TV. So a game definitely worth seeing live then. And thank you to all. All right, next up, we've got J League Power Plays. All right, J League Power Plays, let's have it. Oh, the man himself. Yeah, we had to start with him, didn't we? Oh my let's God. Let's see. Oh, that's Power again. so typical. Well, how many yeah. times have you seen this in the last two years? But it was power, then it was the composure to go around the keeper and then stayed calm and, and put it away. Nice. Oh, and we've got Kashima. Yeah, oh. another player who made the best 11. Bullet of a header well saved and he's in there. Yeah, great to follow it up. That's what all young strikers should be doing, isn't it? They're always told that. Make sure you follow up for the second ball. Oh, and I love this goal. This is... This is exquisite. Well, this is a Kawasaki goal, isn't it? All these small one-touch players, everyone passes, everyone knows where the other players are going to be, and then, yeah, great finish at the end. It's as if uh, they're all connected in like a chain, isn't it? Yeah. So rhythmical and so smooth, and this is a great finish too. Another one, yeah, Mitoma, another fantastic player this season. Mm. Um, definitely one to keep an eye on in the, the coming months and years, for sure. Definitely. Oh, man. This chap has saved Sendai so many times. Yeah. Time. 
great start. Another yeah. goalkeeper. It's good to see the goalkeepers get given a bit of praise as well. You know, we see a lot of the goals, and I think sometimes it's a bit unfair. So it's nice that the yeah. goalkeepers get a bit of a a bit of a spotlight on them as well. Here's another one. Off by Jin Hyun, and this. Oh yeah. Oof. Kim Sung Jin. Did well. Got a little bit of luck at the end, but I think he earned it. Yep. Quality stop. And the free kicks. Oh, that That's is that is silly, isn't it? Yeah. Right into the far corner. Keeper doesn't know which one he's going for. This one too. This is, Did he go straight in? Too much. Ooh. He looks a bit surprised as well, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Very nice. Brazilian connection. Bit of Samba football there. There we go. Brilliant goal. Oh, and I love this. He dances well, this is about. Good. Yeah, because all season he's done Two. that thing where he cuts back and then crosses. Uh -huh. And I think the fullback was probably thinking he's going to go again. And then he he went back again. And then, yeah, keeper had no chance yeah, of that. Yeah, always making them guess at him, right? Yeah. Sakamoto. Oh, 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 I remember this. There we go. Oh, did he even do flare. anything? He kind of just sort of let the ball hit him, didn't it? Bit of flair, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah very nice. Uh, we're gonna I'm talking of flair. Yes. Oh, oh he can't like be happy that he's missed the he's missed the goal at the end, though. Yeah. It would have had words, I think, in the changing room afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. This has got to be the stop of the season. Is it, did it hit his hand? Where did it hit? Was it his chest? It's his, head, his, chest. It's his head, man. It's his head. It's proper John Terry, man. Man alive, yeah. That is putting your body on the line. Mm. No, that's <laughs> surely cheating. You can't do that. <laughs> Can you do that? I'd have booked him if I was the ref. played a one-two with, with the ref. <laughs> How is that allowed? <laughs> this shouldn't be allowed either, really. Look at that. Oof. That's filthy. Look at this <laughs> goal. Oh, Mateus. I mean, he's really loving it in Nagoya, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He did great at Yokohama the year before, too. Like, wherever he plays, he just seems to really enjoy banging those goals in. And another Brazilian having fun. Yeah. Oh. This, this goal is straight out of, like, winning 11, Pro Evo Yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's almost not real, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a cheat code or something. <laughs> Oh, and oh, very no, good. I really want this guy to succeed. After yeah. all, I think he got in the in the copper, you know, mm. doing doing well, Mr. Wader. Your take lovely. First touch made the goal, didn't he? Kills it, and then just yeah, yeah, knows exactly where he wants to put it. Here we go. Kingo. They had to get him in here somehow. Yes. Oh. You can't really defend against that ball, though, can you? <laughs> it's like you said before about Kawasaki. They're all kind of connected. He just knows where to put it. Yeah. You don't need to look. No. You need to know. More, more and then, this is oh. the goal of the season. Ah. Oh. Man. Oh, man. Again, like the awareness. It's, obviously, the awareness is great, but to be able to then actually put it in net, hmm. very, very difficult. So, yeah, deserving winner. Yeah. I bet the keeper would want to forget that one, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It, it kind of reminds me of uh, David Beckham. Yeah. All those years ago, right? Yeah, absolutely. Against Wimbledon, yeah. Yes, against Wimbledon. Uh huh. I think I think Vinny was playing Vinny Jones in that game. He can't have been very happy about that either, no. <laughs> okay, but uh, what do you reckon, man? All, all these like beautiful goals, but as you said. Very nice to have these, you know, uh, flamboyant goals in there, but the keepers too. And that stop in the face, mate. But that's, yeah. that, that's true think, bravery. Yeah, it's, it's good to see, yeah, the keepers, even like, you know, the little bits of skill, the thing from Kakitani that didn't end up being a goal, the little bit of cheekiness from Manabu Saito, like all these little bits is what makes football so enjoyable. And especially these days, you know, with social media and things, people like to share these, these small things and it just adds a little bit of, a little bit of excitement, a little bit of fun. So, yeah, it's great to, to see all the players given a little bit of a spotlight, absolutely. 
And definitely, let's hope the, the season coming up, um, I know it's going to be in a couple of m- more months uh, time, it's going to have this level of entertainment too then. Thank you, Sean. Fingers crossed. Thank you. Fingers crossed, mate. Cheers. Right, next up, it's time to introduce a, um, a legend. We have to call him a legend. Yes, Jay Legends. And this time round, it's him. Dragan Stojkovic, with his dazzling flair and technique, they called him the Pixie. Pixie came to the J League in 1994. A year after the start of the league itself, aged 29, he joined Nagoya Grampus. He quickly became a fan favourite with his sublime skill, and many would remember this famous scene in the pouring rain imprinted into the history of the J-League in the heart of many. The year after that, under the management of yet-to-become world-famous Arsene Wenger, he shines. Despite losing out and winning the league, he scores 17 goals and 29 assists, thus becoming the MVP of that year. And from there, he consolidates his position as a J-League legend. In July 2001, age 36, he finally hangs up his boots. However, the story of Pixie does not end there. In 2008, he's back, but this time round as a manager. He leads Nagoya to the championship after three years at the helm in 2010. Yes, this you know we work very hard, uh, and uh, it's uh, every game is uh, was really hard. But to make this kind of result for the first time in the history of the club, it's really something really special. So I'm very very happy, and I'm very proud for the people of Nagoya and everybody. Face of Nagoya now and forever. So, Sean, you cannot not love Stojkovic. I mean, you remember him as a player? I, I, can't, I don't really, to be honest. Not, not really. He was slightly kind of before, slightly uh-huh. before I was kind of old enough. I certainly, like, you know, with, with him playing over in Japan, back in England, like, you couldn't watch the J-League like you can these days. So it was just before, like, I kind of knew of him. You know, I know the name, obviously, but... For me, it's more with the connection with him as a manager. Like I came here in 2009. He was the coach of Grampus. And I, I knew he had this aura around him. I knew the name. And yeah, speaking to him at, at kickoff conferences and in, in press conferences and stuff, he was always great fun, you know, a real character. And I think you, we kind of touched upon there in the, the skill he had as a player. But I think not just that, but what he brought to Japan, what he brought to the J-League was that mentality, that aggression that I think it really helped, obviously, Principally, it helped Nagoya, but I think it really helped the J League to develop, to grow up, to become a really serious league. And that really came through with when he was there as the manager at Nagoya as well. He didn't take, you know, there was no messing around. Everything was very serious. Every game he wanted the team to win. If they didn't, he wasn't happy and he would come out and tell you. And when the team did do well, he would come out and (laughs) he would tell you as well how good his team was and how well they'd done. And I think, yeah, everybody likes to see those characters in football. And it was fantastic to have had him here. Mm. And talking of his character, um, I think all of us need to see this like a million <laughs> times over. This is the goal now, yeah. he scored uh-huh. and a manager. Right, yes. let's have a look at this then. <laughs> yes, famous scene. Yeah. You can't see him yet. He's not, he's not involved here. But... Not involved. Right, there may be an injury, so the keeper lobs it out. And what? 
in God's name, this happened. <laughs> That's Unbelievable. A I think even Olunga would be would be happy with this one, wouldn't he? I mean, this has to be the best finish of all time. <laughs> There's a Nakazawa looking along, thinking, where the hell did that come from? Look at this. Absolutely unbelievable. How many meters? Maybe 35, 40 meters or something? No, more. It's got to be 50 at least. And he's wearing, you know, he's wearing brogues or something as well. He's not, he's not in his football boots. No, definitely not his boots. He's got his all, you know, he's kitted out in his nice suit. Yeah. Um, Oh, man. But he was sent off, wasn't he? Yeah, I know. It's absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I think, um, if I remember correctly, um, Matsuda, um, God bless him, he's no longer with us, actually went to the ref. Don't send him off. That was just an amazing goal. Yeah, it was a, it was a very yeah. odd one. I think there was something similar way back when um, Paul Gascon, I think he was at Rangers, and the referee dropped his cards. Uh -huh. And Gaza picked up the cards and then pretended to show the referee a yellow card. And then the referee booked him. So occasionally, I think maybe referees, you know, we can see everything from the side and we, we get the context that these, these things are being done. And maybe the referee thought that, that Pixie was, was angry about something and maybe he didn't quite get it. But uh, yeah, sadly, he was sent off. But if anything, it makes the story even better, doesn't it? It adds another little twist at the end. Yeah, totally, totally. It's <laughs> one of those scenes. Um, if we go back to 1993 and go back into the history of the J-League, it has to be in there. I don't yeah. care if it's a 30 second uh, video or like a one minute documentary about the J League. It has to be in there. You know, what a total, what a total. Yeah, legend is the right word for him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I remember back in 2011 or something like that, uh, Arsene Wenger, when he was asked by a journalist who he wants to succeed him at mm. Arsenal, he said Stojkovic, you know. Yeah. I think maybe Arsenal fans now, well, you you know, Arsenal fans now, would you, would you want him now, maybe? Instead of, the, ah, ah, instead of ah. the guy you've currently got? You're not in the best form. Well, <laughs> are we going to trust in Mikel Arteta or not? Oh, my God. <laughs> this has been, uh, it's been the darkest of darkest of years for Arsenal Football Club. Uh -huh. it, well, maybe you need Pixie in there, yeah. yeah. We're, we're veering off J-League discussion now, so we should do Yeah, he's back. out of a job right now, right? I mean, he's not in oh, Bongo anymore. I think he's quick oh, okay. Bongo. Well, there you go. Or he could be yeah. coming back to the J-League. Who knows? Oh, that would be better. That would be so much better. Let's have him in the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, excellent. Um, so, Sean, the J-League, um, we're going to have a rest. You know, we obviously have uh, the Levan Cup final um, in the new year on the 4th. But looking back on this year, um, which has been ravaged by COVID, um, what's your take of the year? It's been yeah, it's, it's been a very strange year. Obviously, as as it has been all around the world, not just in the football world, for for people all over the world, there've been so many difficulties. But I think, right. you know, and for for everybody, I think involved in in football in the, in the J League, it's been incredibly manic since the league came back. There's been games almost every two or three days in one league or another. It's been it's been a crazy season. Um, I think the biggest takeaway is just is the fact that the J League managed in the end to get every single match played. And not just that, but towards the end, they also had fans back in the stadiums. Exactly. Which, which I think is fantastic. Obviously, leagues around Europe and around the world now are trying to, to get fans back in. And I think they could do a lot worse than look at, at what the J-League have done and how they've managed things to have fans back in the stadium. Um, Alunga touched upon it in his acceptance speech as well and said it was fantastic to, to have the fans back in, to, you know, to have them back at live football. So I think all in all, you, you have to give a lot of credit to everybody involved, whether it's the J-League officials, whether it's the, the medical officials, the, the referees, the players, everybody involved have, have managed to, to get this season completed. I think they all deserve a bit of a rest now, a lot of praise. And then hopefully yeah. next year we can come back with, with another great season that's hopefully going to be carried out in a more, a more normal, leisurely fashion. Yeah, good speaking to you, Sean. Um, you take care of yourself uh, and um, I hope everybody takes care of themselves too. You know, um, don't forget to uh, wash your hands and do the whole gargling thing too. Um, and uh, we'll see each other. We'll see everyone in a couple of months time or maybe maybe sooner to discuss the Levan Cup final, hey? <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, thanks a lot for everything. It's been a fantastic year. Mm. Always great chatting with you. And yeah, as you said, I hope everybody takes care, has a good holiday season, Definitely. looks after themselves, looks after their family. And yeah, as you said, wash your hands, wear a mask and just just be sensible. And fingers crossed we'll all be over this soon and we can get back to all enjoying football properly together in the stadiums. Yeah, excellent. Nice one. 
Um, so wishing everyone a happy new year. Cheers. Thank you, everybody. Happy new year. Bye.